Right now on Denver 7 News at 4, home transactions are complicated, but Colorado's hot market has seen buyers make big concessions. I think there's definitely a financial gamble there, right? And yeah, that's when things start to get sticky. What problems the seller has to legally disclose to you before you close. More states are pushing to remove the requirement to have a permit to carry a concealed gun in public. How this change is impacting the number of officer-involved shootings. And water supply concerns have a growing number of places offering incentives now to get you to ditch your lawn. We're taking a look at the cost of making that switch. Plus, she's one of the AB's biggest fans. If she lights up, she turns into a different kid when she steps into those rinks. And the players light up when they see her. How the hockey world stepped up to get this young fan to the Stanley Cup final. Thanks so much for joining us for Denver 7 News at 4. I'm Jason Grenauer. First at 4, there is no sign of relief and inflation keeps ticking up. That's according to the latest Consumer Price Index released today. Gas prices are pushing the rate of inflation up at a rapid pace and the cost of food and housing are seeing the sharpest increases in decades. Gloria Pasmino breaks down the numbers and explains what the White House plans to do about it. You know, all the tips that I literally just made the night before that I wanted to put into like maybe bills or save, I, I can't. The pain continues. The price of regular gas nationwide now averaging $4.99 a gallon, according to AAA. I still have to go to my jobs, and so it's not really negotiable. I'm gonna stop driving. The high cost of gas helped drive inflation to 8.6% for the 12 months ending in May, higher than in April. That's according to the latest Consumer Price Index, the government's basic inflation measure released Friday. The White House facing a major challenge to stabilize the economy. My administration is going to continue to do everything we can to lower the prices to the American people, and the Congress has to act. The core CPI reading, which doesn't include volatile food and energy prices, posted a 6% increase over the same period, marking a jump from the previous month. All combined, the increases are among the highest consumers have experienced since 1981. For many Americans, it's getting harder to afford everyday items. If I can make it from one month to the other month, that's good. Food prices have increased 10.1%, the first double-digit increase in three decades. The cost of housing also increased, along with the price of used cars. And there's no relief on the horizon. The high pace of inflation is likely to raise interest rates again when the Federal Reserve Board meets next week. I'm Gloria Pasmino reporting. Okay, so we could all use some good news, right? While there is some when it comes to Colorado's housing market, the state is finally seeing a shift in that very hyper-competitive market. Now, statewide, new listings in May hit more than 11,000. That's up about 4% from just a month ago. The median sale price in May was just under $600,000, down just slightly, but that's a big change from the jump in prices that we've been seeing. And it's not just buyers seeing a change. Sellers are seeing it too. Instead of homes just flying off the market in a weekend or less, homes are now on the market, some of them for one, two, or even three weeks, depending on the price. But one big legal problem could cost home sellers tens of thousands of dollars. As the housing market becomes just a little less competitive, buyers might get pickier when it comes to the condition of the home that they're purchasing. As Denver 7's Jessica Crawford reports, being dishonest about the problems with the home you're selling could come back to haunt you. But this is a nice remodeled house right here. I, mean, I like it. I like the colors. If your walls could talk, what would they say? There were some cracks on the outside of this place that I'm concerned about. Travis Lockard is one of many Coloradans trying to find a place to call home. We are trying to have a family, so we want to have a space where we can, you know, grow. There's a lot he's willing to put up with. I'm looking at foundation prom, seeing if there's the major systems, how those look. He just wants to know the truth. And according to Colorado law, if a seller knows about a big problem with the house, they have to disclose it, whether or not the buyer waives an inspection. For instance, if a roof is leaking, that is something that a seller would be expected to reveal 
uh, to the buyer. Eric Nesbitt is a real estate attorney. He says things like structural damage and flooding have to be disclosed. This is true even if those defects have been fully repaired. They can't pursue the seller for fraud, for failure to disclose, again, because that's the law, that's a statutory right under the state of Colorado. If the fraud causes the property to be worth less than the buyer paid, the seller could have to pay thousands to make up the difference. On the flip side, sellers are only required to disclose the major house problems that they have knowledge of. So be careful about waiving inspections. I think there's definitely a financial gamble there, right? You're rolling the dice if you start to wave things and yeah, that's when things start to get sticky. The housing market still hasn't completely cooled and some people are still waiving inspections as a bargaining chip. In those cases, be prepared to pay to fix problems you didn't know about. Because if I have to give away all my inspection rights, I need to make sure I'm coming into something somewhat solid. That was Denver 7 reporter and attorney Jessica Crawford reporting. As the cost to own a home rises, some cities and counties want to help people stay in their homes by offering property tax relief or discounts. In Denver, officials told us their help is for both homeowners and for renters. Denver Human Services encourages uh, residents to apply for this program. It really does offer some help in affording their home and remaining valued members of our community. Now, Denver is taking applications now for the 2021 tax year, and it's not just for seniors. It's also for families and people with disabilities. You can look at the eligibility requirements by searching Denver Property Tax Relief online. If you live somewhere else, check with your city or county to see if they offer property tax relief. Turning now to the coronavirus in Colorado, COVID-19 cases are headed in the wrong direction, with all counties in the metro now with a high transmission rate. At last check, there are 3,600 new cases and 64 new hospitalizations in Denver. Doctors say even though we're seeing higher cases and hospitalizations, it's nowhere near the record levels that we saw during the Omicron surge. Now, we reached out to the Denver Department of Public Health to see if there were any looming mask mandates. They sent us a statement saying, in part, although CDC community level has changed, Denver will not be implementing a mask mandate. Fewer people are being hospitalized because of COVID-19, and our hospital capacity is not in jeopardy. As there is greater community spread of the virus, DDPHE encourages residents to understand and utilize the tools available to personally protect themselves from COVID-19. This is our position as we move towards a more endemic phase of COVID-19 in our community, end quote. Now, this might have you wondering if this is going to affect the Stanley Cup Finals. Well, Ball Arena tells us it's working with the NHL and the city to keep up with health and safety guidelines. Masks are still strongly encouraged inside, but not required. The arena also has more health and cleaning protocols in place. Summer travel in and out of the United States is about to get a little easier. A senior leader with the White House says they plan to let the international air travel COVID testing requirement expire on Sunday. Now, it required anyone entering the U.S. from another country to test negative. The CDC has determined it's no longer necessary. The agency could eventually reinstate the rule based on virus spread and any new variants that may come up. Now, international cases of monkeypox are now affecting the U.S. military. An active duty service member stationed in Germany is the first known case. Now, the military says that this person was treated at an army health clinic. They're isolated off base for recovery. As a precaution, the military is doing contact tracing to identify anyone who came in contact with the patient. Meanwhile, federal health leaders provided an update today on monkeypox cases here at home. They say there are 45 cases across 15 states in Washington, D.C., a majority are reporting exposure from international travel. Health leaders say there are no community level outbreaks at this time, and they did stress that they have the testing, the vaccines, and the treatments to be able to handle this. An additional 500,000 vaccines were also ordered to be delivered this year. Now, we recognize women who have served in the military this Sunday with Women's Veterans Day. And there's a new push to make sure that they're getting the health care benefits that they've earned. Nearly 60% of all veterans are eligible for VA health care services. Less than half of them use those benefits, according to a study from the nonprofit Rand Corporation. A separate survey found that women veterans, 50 and older, 
are the least likely group to use their benefits. Now, part of the issue is the VA system can just be so complicated and confusing to navigate. You know, what I find is that a lot of uh, veterans, like my dad, you know, they get out of the service, um, they, they go on to use other health care benefits, and they don't even realize sometimes what, that, that they're eligible for uh, other assistance. AARP just expanded its free health benefits navigator tool to include how to access VA specialty care programs and services, including the Women's Veterans Health Care Program and specialty emotional and mental health services. We are going through a, a stressful time in this world uh, between the pandemic and the war in Europe. And we know that there are a lot of emotional mental health services that are needed. But also, you know, there are critical uh, benefits. Um, I, for example, the hearing benefits. My dad needed hearing aids. And um, the VA provided those hearing aids for him with no cost, whereas he didn't have insurance that covered that. Now, the expanded navigator also helps with access to the VA's Family Caregiver Assistance Program. AARP's caregiving expert says that resource is what made it possible for her to care for her dad who had Alzheimer's in her home for six years. Now, you can find the Health Benefits Navigator at aarp.org slash vets health navigator. Well, with the national average for gas now hitting $5 a gallon, we are crunching the numbers to figure out when it actually may be cheaper to fly for your next summer trip. Also coming up, it's that time of year. Political ads have started filling up commercial spots ahead of the primary on June 28th. We take a look at how a Democratic tactic may actually wind up helping Republicans. 